Okay, we're now comparing our torque wrench certificate with the wrench itself. Of note, of the serial number on the certificate, this should match the serial number on the handle of the wrench. We're also looking at the set values. It's important to note that they should be within the maximum and minimum found on the certificate. So we're inspecting our torque wrench now for signs of previous damage, especially if you're sharing your torque wrenches with others who may not be as careful as you. As with any bolting procedure, it's important to follow the manufacturer's specifications. In this case, 140 newton meters. We're now going to unlock our wrench. We've obtained the torque figure previously from the manual, which is 140 newton meters. We're going to wind up towards that value, always coming from the lesser value to the higher value. Once we've obtained that value, we're going to lock our wrench to prevent any unnecessary slippage during use. Should we overshoot our desired torque value, best practice is that we come back and wind up towards the desired value. Checking your ratchet to make sure you've got the correct orientation. If you need to reverse your ratchet, push through to change direction. So we're now in a position to select the appropriate adapter for the job we're about to start. Let's take that to our wheel. Now at this point, it's important to consider where we're going to place our hands. We don't want to be here and we don't want to be here. Work on the centre of the handle, pressing down firmly. The distinctive click you've just heard indicates the wrench has hit the desired torque setting. So we've now finished using our torque wrench and we're going to store it. It's good practice now to wind your torque wrench down to its lower reading on the scale. To do this, unlock and wind down.